So last uh, week we have a kind of break in our class uh, since uh, I ask you to decide which kind of final exam would you prefer to do in form of a final paper or a final presentation. Uh, many of you decided uh, to make, to write uh, an essay which is good and fine. And some of you uh, were looking still for a topic. Uh, the same with those who decided to make a presentation. Uh, also, some of you uh, are still in research process, mm -hmm. which kind of topic will be good for a presentation, connected, of course, with our uh, final um, with our uh, topic it means many faces of uh, religious and not only religious fundamentalism uh, and we had uh, not too much time to discuss uh, the texts uh, which i sent you um, and uh, which you could read uh, on the platform uh, one, as you remember, was connected with uh, Muslim or Islamic fundamentalism and the distinction between Islam and Islamism proposed by T.B. Uh, Basan T.B. and uh, German Syrian uh, uh, scientist. Uh, and I hope that some of you had the chance to, to look in and to, to read it. And another, uh, a book by uh, uh, Scott Appleby, uh, a co-author of Fundamentalist Project. And I said that uh, actually we can uh, discuss these books uh, this week. But I will nevertheless uh, prepare a short uh, film as a warming up or uh, invitation to our reflection. But I thought that perhaps for those uh, who are still looking for a topic, it will be interesting to uh, broader a little bit uh, also a spectrum of your interest. And uh, I will put on the platform uh, and another book, a very <laughs> big one, actually, with more than 700 pages. And uh, it was published 10 years ago uh, in 2010 by uh, two sociologists, uh, Robert Patman and David Campbell. Uh, I will suggest to read just a uh, first uh, uh, chapter uh, and those of you who will find it inspiring and uh, uh, will wake up your curiosity of course you can you can read uh, uh, more uh, those chapters uh, who are more uh, uh, connected with your personal interest uh, I will give you just a, a few uh, indications uh, why this book uh, written by these two gentlemen is so relevant for our topic. Uh, the title is uh, American Grace, How Religion Divides and Unites Us. So this ambivalent uh, uh, character of uh, religion is already um, uh, present in the title. But uh, uh, I will insist that this uh, uh, both functions uh, to create division and also to create uh, unity between uh, followers of religion is, is very interesting. But uh, and this book was a, a bestseller and is considered as a classic book. Uh, describing the changes uh, in American religiosity, in the religious landscape, and so on and so on. Uh, so for those of you who are really interested uh, to understand what is going on in America, 
and how uh, uh, religiosity of Americans are changing and why, uh, which factors are contributing to these changes, this is very, very important. Uh, so just a few um, uh, indications how to, to read this book. Uh, first of all, a uh, very simple statement and obvious, even trivial, that uh, in the last 50 years, uh, something uh, changed, uh, has changed uh, in, in America. And they gave uh, two good examples as the illustration of this change. Uh, first is the fate of the Ten Commandments uh, monuments which were um, distributed or donated to different uh, states, cities, communities, etc. in 1950. And most of those who got uh, this uh, gift were happy and put it uh, in different places, uh, mostly in public uh, spaces. And uh, nobody was actually protesting because after the Second World War II, after the Second World War, and the, in the atmosphere of Cold War, of uh, confrontation between um, uh, communism and, and Western world, uh, religion was considered as a very important uh, element of uh, American identity. So nobody actually was, uh, uh, disturbed by the fact that uh, religious symbols were put in the public sphere. Uh, as you remember, uh, and Potman and uh, Campbell also mentioned this uh, exactly in the 50s, uh, this uh, slogan uh, we got, we trust in, was put to, uh, on, the, on the American money, and so on and so on. So it was peacefully accepted as the re American reality. But in, uh, 2015, in 2000, this, the same monument was contested. There were a lot of discussions, protests in many places. Uh, this monument was removed. So the question why, what changed? I think it's interesting why uh, 1950 Nobody was disturbed by this, uh, the presence of religious symbols. And in, in 2000, this is problematic. And the second example that something changed is uh, the comparison between two presidential elections. Uh, in 2060, uh, when uh, Catholic candidate John Kennedy uh, ran for presidency, uh, he was uh, faced with the challenge to convince the, his potential uh, Protestant uh, uh, electors, voters, that he will be a good president as a Catholic. And he, as you remember, he won. He was a good president, considered as a good president in any way. Uh, and in 2004, another Catholic candidate, uh, John Kerry, also from Massachusetts, was running for presidency, and he faced a different problem, not to convince the, the Protestant, but to convince some Catholics that he will be a good Protestant, that he will be a good president. So again, this is an illustration that something changed. Hey. Uh, we can say that uh, in the um, uh, 60s, uh, the identification of uh, voters with, with religion, with confession, with, was very strong. In 2000, uh, the problem was not uh, to which confession or religion you belong, but um, how religious you are. So, uh, questions like abortion, so pro-life movement, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it was the more relevant. So again, something changed, has changed also in this, this regard. Uh, the problem was not uh, to which uh, religion you belong, uh, but uh, how religious uh, you are. And now for them is a very interesting question. 
how can uh, religious um, pluralism coexist with religious uh, polarization? And uh, I think this is a good question uh, that uh, in the pluralistic uh, society as America, we, we have to, uh, to do with the growing polarization. How come, how, is it, how it is possible that uh, uh, the variety of religion are helping uh, in a way uh, to this growing process of polarization? And the answer is to be fine <laughs> found in this book. And the, the interesting note about author, I, th I think that this is a good illustration of the, of the difference between, for example, um, uh, monolithic, religiously speaking, uh, societies or countries um, and uh, United States and America. And uh, speaking about the uh, problem of fundamentalism, as I mentioned in class, we in this uh, project uh, published uh, by um, Martin Marty and Scott Appleby, uh, you have uh, uh, case studies of different fundamentalisms, for example, um, obvious fundamentalism in Muslim countries, uh, less obvious uh, Christian fundamentalism in countries like uh, uh, part of Spain, uh, in, in Basque land, or in North Ireland, or in Orthodox uh, Russia, Ukraine, or the Catholic Poland. We have in this countries uh, examples of religious fundamentalism, and usually uh, it's hardly to, to divide uh, religious fundamentalism from uh, politics, because uh, when one religion is dominant, usually the politicians are looking for support from religious leaders. This is obvious in Iran, this is obvious in, in, um, in Israel, where politicians are looking for a support of rabbis. And we have a similar uh, tendency also in, uh, in Poland, where politicians are looking for a support of, of Catholic Church. Uh, but what is uh, important and, and uh, again, uh, illustrate uh, what is illustrating how different America is, is the family trees of both authors. David Campbell is a Mormon and uh, Robert Patman, um, he is uh, Jewish but it's not so obvious <laughs> how Jewish they, he is. And the same with Campbell Bell. Uh, this is not so obvious that he is Mormon because we have uh, a, a serious unconversion from Christianity to Judaism, from Mormonism to Christianity of different denominations. So, um, and the conclusion is very interesting. Uh, that their uh, families exemplify how religious pluralism is not merely an abstraction. So it's not that I try to imagine what it means to be to, to live in pluralistic country, but simply you have this pluralism in your own family. You have Mormons, you have Christians, you have Jews in your own family. So it's it influences your perception of the presence of religion in public sphere. So in other words, pluralism is, is often personal. And the, the, the conclusion of this fact is like this, that personal pluralism means that America is graced with religion, uh, religious harmony. So in a way, you cannot fight with uh, followers of uh, other religions if the members of your own family um, belong to this uh, different uh, religion. So uh, in other words, this thick book, which I encourage you to, to have a look, um, is uh, very confusing on the one hand because it's, it's like 
complicating uh, uh, or making uh, the, um, our image of uh, uh, American pluralism very confusing. But uh, as you know, uh, academic uh, uh, effort is not to simplify the reality, but exactly to be aware how complicated it is. How to relate uh, the story told by um, Patman and uh, Campbell in uh, American Grace, uh, it will be our uh, scope uh, and aim uh, during uh, our class discussion.